Today, I'm gonna to be reviewing Street Fighter, the storytelling game. This came out in 1994 from White Wolf, uh, after second edition Vampire and Werewolf, and first edition Mage and Wraith. Now, if you can't tell from the cover, this is a complete tonal shift, moving away from dark, gritty, personal horror to this 80s action-oriented, over-the-top, pulp, campy style setting. Uh, this has a heavy focus on character placement on a grid, as well as a deck of combat cards that you play round after round. Let's get into it. Not to be confused with trading cards, or playing cards, or combat cards, or cantrip cards, or tarot cards, no. Combat cards is a unique mechanic to this game in which you list out the speed, damage, and move values of whatever maneuver you're trying to do alongside any special values and you keep these face down in your play area. You play one every round and this represents the move that you're going to do that round. This is the most remarkable and interesting feature of Street Fighter RPG and also the most divisive. For some, this is going to be awesome. The ability to thoroughly outthink your opponent, plan ahead, position your character in such a way that you can expect what they're going to play and counter with the appropriate card is going to be awesome. For others, you might just not have any fun with this. This is going to be a unique review today in that I genuinely do love this game a lot, but I can't ignore the flaws that this type of approach brings with it. First of all, let me explain what this is. Street Fighter, the storytelling game, it's a pen and paper role-playing game based around the Street Fighter video games developed and published by Capcom. It uses the storyteller system for the rule set. This character sheet probably looks familiar to a lot of you. Players are gonna start off thinking of a concept for their character, and based on that concept, a fighting style. So anything from a unemployed, struggling writer to a battle-tested Green Beret. From that concept, in the core rulebook, there's 10 fighting styles to pick from. Each of those styles represents one of the world warriors. There's definitely several missing, but they show up in later expansions. You've got things like Shotokan Karate, Capoeira, uh, Standard Kung Fu, Sumo Wrestling, Sanbo, Special Forces Training. These are all viable options for you. And the fighting style is gonna represent the way your character fights in combat, what special maneuvers they have access to, and typically how they kind of resolve combat situations. Now, the first thing that you do after picking out your concept and style is kind of flesh out your character. Attributes are next. You're gonna pick which of these three, physical, social, or mental, is your character's primary trait. Um, well, for our writer, probably mental is primary, followed by social, then physical. Now, upon determining that, you get seven dots for the primary, five dots for the secondary, and three for the tertiary. So you can flesh out your character a little more. Each dot represents one 10-sided die, and the way this game is handled is that the storyteller is gonna pick a target number, from one to 10, representing the 10 sides of the dice, and how many successes that you need in order to do what you're trying to do. So the more dice you have, the more dice you get to roll when you make those checks, the greater the likelihood of you succeeding. So for our writer, uh, we get seven dots in here. Let's do something like three, four, five, six, seven. He's, he's kind of all around, um, uh, all around pretty good. Something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You get this one free dot in all your attributes. Now, social is going to be our, our last one. Uh, he's, maybe he looks good. He can't really manipulate anybody, uh, but he's kind of uh, charismatic, so something like that. And physical, he's kind of just down the road, average like that. Essentially, you distribute those dots however you want. Abilities is the next thing. However, in this case, you get, um, I believe you get nine, seven, and then four. Yeah, it's listed at the bottom of the sheet. So again, determine which of these is your primary, secondary, and tertiary. Then you have nine dots, seven dots, and four dots. At this point, you can't go over three on any of these, but kind of the same system. 
Now, finally, we move into advantages. Now, your backgrounds and techniques. Backgrounds represents things like the money you have. Do you have a butler? Do you have a manager? Uh, how famous your character is? These kind of represent story beats and quirks that can show up. Techniques is obviously solely related to how your character fights and how trained they are. Uh, if you're a sumo wrestler, probably not going to have a lot in kicking um, or athletics. It's going to be more grabbing and blocking. Uh, if you're a karate expert, you know, maybe focus, which is what they use for fireballs, etc. is probably not going to be very high on your list. But you build these out. Again, the dots listed for these are down here, five and eight. Now we get into special maneuvers. Now the special maneuvers require a certain amount of dots in your techniques to unlock, but they represent the moves you can perform each round in combat. While every character has the basics, jab, strong, fierce, short, forward, roundhouse, block, move, and grab, the special maneuvers represent your dragon punches, your fireballs, your air hurricane kicks, uh, flash kicks. These are the unique moves that you have access to. Another thing with the special maneuvers is combos. You can spin some of your maneuver points to build a combo. Hey, I want jab to combo into strong. So round one, if I throw this move, and then round two, I follow up with the subsequent move, I'm gonna get a speed bonus to that. You get three points to distribute to your glory and honor. These are gonna go up or decay as you win real tournaments or lose them, and as your character acts honorably or dishonorably. Your chi and willpower is based on the fighting style that you've picked. And then finally, you get your freebie points to distribute to fully flesh out the character as you see fit. Which brings us to combat, what we come to Street Fighter for. At the beginning of each round, you're gonna play a card from your combat hand face down. Once everyone's played their card, you're gonna declare the speed of the maneuver that you played. Jabs are gonna have high speed, whereas a fierce is gonna have a slow speed. Whoever went slowest goes first, with whoever went fastest going last in the turn order. When it's your turn, you move up to the move value, the card that you played, and then if someone's in range, you can flip over your combat card and perform that attack. You're gonna roll dice to see if you hit, then you're gonna roll more dice to see if you deal damage and how much damage. The caveat and the truly unique thing about this system is whoever went faster than you in the turn order can interrupt your turn at any point, any point. After you've moved one step out of three, after you've completed your move, but before you flip your card over, after you flipped your card over and declared your target, right before you roll the dice, at any point during your turn, you can be interrupted by someone who went faster than you. Likewise, they can be interrupted by someone who went faster than them. You can see how this can be very hectic if you have three, four, five, six combatants in a field, and there's a lot to keep track of there. You have to remember how many movement is left for this character, who this person is targeting as you kind of sort through each of the turns sequentially. Coupling that with unique rules for uh, botching, aborting the maneuver to block, blocking, conferring speed bonuses next round, combos giving speed bonuses, how much damage someone has in a turn to see if they get dizzied, knockdowns, different things like that, and it can get very unwieldy and it's a lot to take in if you're a first time GM. But you kind of get the gist for how the system goes. Combat in this game is handled on a hex map, with each tile representing one move to move into that tile. Now, there's positional stuff, there's moves that follow a certain trajectory or path, so movement of your character along this path is important. And it leads to some very creative plays where this person is faster than you and they can sidestep the fireball, or you declare, okay, I'm gonna shoot a fireball here, all right, I'm gonna move three and get here, so you whip and I, I hit you. There's also jumping maneuvers, you can jump over stuff, crouch through things, etc., etc. Combat is gonna typically last for 10 rounds in an organized fight uh, for street fights and things like that. You just go until someone's knocked unconscious. 
Now, my excitement for the game comes with some caveats, as arguably the crowning achievement of the game is also its damning failure. It takes forever. The 80s action theme, ridiculous concept of M. Bison wanting to take over the world through the powers of crime can get pushed to the side as you slowly trudge through round after round of combat cards with characters interrupting one another to move out of range of a slower character whilst another character interrupts them to sidestep them and stab them in the side while you're trying to remember whose turn it is, was, will be, what effects and states each character is in, how much damage they've sustained during the round. Connecting with an attack brings its own set of challenges as you're left gathering dice, removing dice due to player's soak value along with any blocks they may have played, adding willpower modifiers, rolling, accounting for misses, botches, it can get very tedious. I've personally found it remarkably fun, but I've consistently tried and kept combat to a one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -on -two state and kept the more open situations where my players are surrounded by thugs to like theater of the mind to keep the pace up. This game is not going to suit everyone because of that. Uh, there are some severe issues with the system in that it commits, in my opinion, one of the most tragic missteps in any RPG. Namely, without an educated storyteller guiding players through creation, uh, your players can honestly end up with a horrifically underpowered character. This game is based on Street Fighter, and its core focus is fighting. As such, you're highly encouraged to take physical as your primary attribute. If not, you'll likely just get thrashed over and over in combat, which can drag stories to a halt. As the unemployed rider from above, whilst a wholly playable character and maybe interesting concept in other RPGs, just can't even last two rounds against another fighter. Uh, on the flip side, this game can produce some astronomically overpowered characters, especially if some of the supplements are introduced and used rules as written. Starting characters with 6 strength, 3 dex, 6 stamina, insane combos. You can equip a 5 dexterity duelist with a katar to give them additional 2 speed and 3 damage. Min-maxers can thoroughly break this system with animal hybrids and cybernetics uh, if you don't kind of reel them in. To sum it up, I love this game. This one's okay too. The themes of gothic personal horror are shelved and in its place comes this over the top 80s action style. It's always good for a laugh and for a lot of fun around the table. If someone in your group is only focused on min-maxing their character, you're gonna have to rein them in as they can completely break the progression of the system and end up with the character that, while they can't do anything outside of combat, they just demolish anyone they come in contact with in the arena. And because the system doles out renown, glory, and honor for things you do in the arena, their character can skyrocket into the stratosphere while everyone else is left kind of in their dust. Um, it's not a perfect game. There's definitely some flaws in the combat system, how convoluted it can get. Uh, and maybe you and your group just don't enjoy this kind of campy style. But there's support in Roll20 for the character sheet natively. There's a 20th anniversary edition that's free online that's been compiled by some amazing people. You can download that PDF. It compiles all the supplements, has errata and FAQs in there to fix some of the broken abilities and uh, traits and backgrounds that you could pick to make it more streamlined and just balanced. Um, definitely give it a shot. I think you'll have fun with it. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.